let's look at a couple things here. I'm kind of giving you guys a hybrid, like between striking and grappling. So we're working both. But if he's just gonna strike, let's address that real quick so we know what to do for self-defense purposes. If he's just gonna sit up and hit me, right? He just wants to do this, just both hands hitting like that, yeah. Then I, again, I don't wanna do this. So if I'm either going to pull him forward with my legs, I'm gonna immediately sit up. And when I sit up, I put that hand past my shoulder. So I have base, right? My post is outside my silhouette, but uh, uh, close enough that I have a lot of power going forward so I can hip bump sweep. Or if he starts to drive into me, I can scoot my hips back. We can start to attack him. So you gotta take away that space right away. So I'm either pulling or I'm sitting up. If I'm not gonna do one of those two things and he's maintaining posture where he's gonna go hit, put your hands up, then I'm gonna switch to my knee shield, okay? So my knee comes up here, my head goes back, try and reach me, so he can't reach, and then my right foot will do one of the very similar thing. I'll either put it on the hip, sometimes I'm a little, with this one, because I have a knee in front, I'm a little lazier with this, but this is active, okay? So he goes to hit now, now he can't hit. This is a strike to the ribs, to kick out his knee, and that's gonna get him, get his attention for other things that I wanna do, okay? But I'm gonna put that knee there right away, lean back and move my hip forward so he can't hit. And again, I don't want you guys putting your foot on the mat to do it, so open up your legs, use your legs on his body, get good base, Liam, use your legs on his body to adjust Get to your posture here. Make sure he can't hit you. Yep, and then you work. You can hit here. You can take out his base here. And even if I switch with Liam, you see I have reach on him. Get to an knee shield. Yeah, even here, I can't reach you, right? Even with the height difference. So this is, this is a powerful guard once you guys get used to it. So. You're either going to go to that, or if you want to keep playing close guard, you have two choices. Sit straight up, like for a hip bump sweep, right? And then we'll do various things off here, but at least here, go back. I can't really hurt him with any punches, okay? Or pull immediately. That's going to force me to react with my hands, and then you can engage for the frames, right? But don't, don't hang out here and cover up your head. That's not a good idea. So let's work those options real quick, just in case we're dealing with just a pure striker. Okay, go ahead. That's striking. Now let's go more grappling, just to give you guys some more options here so we understand what we're doing here. Again, if we're talking about grappling, I'm always defending the zone first, right? And as he goes to reach for me, I can cross grab and pull. I'm also, if we're doing MMA or any kind of fighting, I'm always looking to control his hands. I wanna know where his hands are, right? So as soon as I pull him forward, he posts, I'm always looking for the hands to control the hands and the battle's gonna be like this. Same thing with Nogi. If we're not wearing a gi, I'm gonna look to control the hands. He's gonna wanna clear the hands. And then we're getting into a game where we're always working like that. And as long as I have a wrist, right, then we can always be pulling with our legs, looking to take the back and attack. Now, with the gi, I'm looking to block it out. He gets the grip. Over the top, we've worked this a lot in this class, but I want you guys to know this is very important, right? I always want the over the top position. Now, once I have that position, nice loose grip, never here in jujitsu, right? Always like this or here, so it's mostly my pinky and my ring finger there that are holding him. And then as soon as he goes to pass or move from there, well, with that grip, goes to stand or do anything, you're gonna be able to break posture real easy at this angle, right? Bit of an airplane. so. If, he's, if he just is stubborn and he wants to fight from there, then you're gonna be able to break the posture pretty easy. And we're back into our low guard for volley tudo. If he's a little sharper jujitsu player, he's gonna to wanna to come back over the top. So that's the grip he's gonna want. You know he's gonna reach for it, right? So I'm always ready for it. So when I'm here, he comes back over the top. That's when we capture that arm again. So it's real simple, he gets his grip, I don't want to let him get it, but he got it. I always go back over the top. If he doesn't, if he stays there, relatively easy to break the posture, as long as you guys are using your legs and, and good angles. 
if he repummels, my hand is here. See, repummel and grab over the top. My hand's here to catch. Go. Right? And this one's already where it needs to be. So as he lets go, I pull. That brings me right into my overhook. Again, we're back to here. And we can lock it back up and work to the side. I still want you guys to always keep working to get to the side position from there. Make sense? So block it out. Don't let him get it. Control the hands. If he gets a grip on your gi first, go over the top, then break his posture. If he repummels, because he knows he wants to be over the top, be prepared for that with your pull. Come underneath and break posture at that moment. That's a real common uh, sequence that you guys are going to run into. So let's work that a little bit back and forth. Go ahead. 